What's up guys? Welcome back to another video of Lil Scratchers. And this is part one of how to make a rock paper scissor game in Scratch. So, as the name says, this is the basic rock paper scissor game which we used to play as a child. So, you have a player and a robot. So instead of another player, you have a robot. And we got three buttons here, the rock, the paper, and the scissor buttons. So it becomes obvious if you click the paper button, the hand shoots out paper. If you click the scissor button, the hand shoots out scissors. And as you can see, the bot also, along with the player, shoots out a random thing, either rock, paper or scissors. And we have the normal score and the bot score and the person with the most score wins the game. So this is actually infinite, meaning you can play as long as you want. So this game is pretty simple. So let's jump right into it. Alright, so here I am in a brand new project with four sprites, the hand along with the rock, paper, scissor buttons. So in the hand, we got the three main costumes, the rock, the paper and the scissors. So now let's go ahead and code the hand first. What I'm going to be doing is when the green flag is clicked, we're going to go to motion and go to X negative 250 and Y0. And we're also going to be pointing in the direction 180. The reason we're pointing in the direction 180 is because the costumes are not pointing towards the right. They're actually pointing upwards. I'll tell you why we are doing that in a bit. So right here, I'm also going to go ahead and switch the costume to rock and also make a new variable known as RPS or rock, paper, scissors for short. Then I'm going to set RPS to R, rock. And then I'm going to be going ahead to the rock button spread. And I'm going to be doing when the green flag is clicked forever if else and say if touching the mouse pointer then you set the brightness so we go to looks and set the brightness to negative 10 just to give it a hovering effect then inside the if else and inside the if touching mouse pointer we're gonna add in another if statement asking if the mouse is down in that case, what are you going to do is we are going to wait until not mouse down. And then we're going to set RPS to R. And we're going to broadcast a new message named chosen. So we're telling that the rock, paper, scissors out of these three a thing has been chosen and inside the else uh, inside the else we're just gonna add set brightness effect to zero there we go so now if I go ahead and click here and I'm just gonna go click rock then the RPS is set to rock so let's go ahead and do the same thing with these two buttons. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste these codes. So I'm gonna drag the code from the rock button to the other buttons. And I'm just gonna change the RPS values. So for paper, RPS is gonna be P. And for scissors, RPS is gonna be S. So now, as you can see, we can change the values accordingly. R for rock. P for paper and S for scissors. But 
we gotta do something if we have chosen a thing. Well, I don't know why I keep calling it a thing, but still, you get the idea. So let's go to the hand and say, when I receive chosen, repeat three times. And let's go ahead and do repeat again, duplicate this. Go to motion and then say, repeat nine times, turn anti-clockwise 10 degrees and repeat nine times again turn anti-clockwise negative 10 degrees basically turning clockwise 10 degrees instead of anti-clockwise so let's see what happens if i click in here it does this really nice animation but what happens if this is not over here and instead it's kept in the center if I keep it in the center something like this happens yeah that's pretty weird right it's like you're just twisting your hand completely like a robot that's the reason why we are not keeping it centered we're just keeping it out of the center so it does that kind of a motion. And also we're going to be going ahead and setting the actual RPS to RPS just to make sure the values are pretty constant, pretty nice. And also we're going to do forever if grab an equal to grab a variable RPS and say if RPS is equal to R then you switch to the costume rock because R is rock. The same goes with P. So if the RPS is P, then we switch to the costume paper. And if the RPS is S, we switch to the costume scissors. So now let's give it a quick test. And as you can see, it works perfectly but it's looking kind of weird because when we start the next round it just keeps the hand of the previous choice so now i have selected paper and if i want to do the rock paper scissors shoot thingy then if i click scissors it stays on paper and does the rock paper scissors shoot thingy So now uh, for that, what I'll be doing is I'm going to be going ahead to rock, to the rock button. And before mouse is down, I'll set RPS to R. And let's test if that works. Well, let's just do it with all of the other sprites. Because why not? So we do the same with the paper and the scissor button. So now let's give it a shot. So we chose paper and now as we choose another thing, the costume is set back to rock and only then the thing which you have selected will be shown. So that is pretty cool actually. But just to make our codes neater, we're going to make a block named pick and in the define pig, in the define pick, we'll take all of the if else variables and in the forever loop, we'll put in pick. We'll do the same for the other buttons as well. So yeah. And for the final one, I mean, not Rick, pick. And there we go. It's just the same code, but now it's kind of organized. So right now we also have a lot of bugs. Like for example, if I click rock and while the rock is happening, if I click paper, it does that. 
and that is pretty bad. So let's go ahead and fix that. So to fix this, I will be going ahead and making a variable known as round active. This variable will tell us whether the round is going on or it is not. So let's go to one of the buttons and set the round active to yes after we broadcast chosen. Now I'm going to be going ahead and doing when the green flag is clicked forever if else and grab an equal to operator and say if round active is equal to yes then since the round is active you have to disable everything so we're gonna just stop other scripts in sprite but if it isn't active then we can go ahead and execute the pick command whenever the button is being pressed so i'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste these into the other two buttons and also in the other two buttons, make sure to set the variable to set the round active variable to yes after broadcasting chosen. And there we go. Now we go ahead to the hand and over here we set round active to no. Because right here is where our round ends. It does the rock, paper, scissors shoot thingy. And it takes up all of the variable, uh, all of the costumes by itself. And now we have round active no. Also, at the start of the game too, we'll set round active to no. So now if we press this constantly, key pressing it, it doesn't work. The same goes with all of the other buttons. And there we go. So now we have fixed the bug as well. So that's it guys. I'm going to be ending this video here. If you liked it, make sure to smash that like button. And guys, make sure to subscribe to Lil Scratches. Thank you so much for 500 subscribers. My name is Parm8000. This is Lil Scratches. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.